Tonight's lesson is finding equivalent ratios given the total quantity. We're going to work, continue to work on computing unit rates, dividing fractions by fractions, multiplying fractions by fractions, and writing equations for proportional relationships. Let's take a look at our first example. To make green paint, students mixed yellow paint with blue paint. The table below shows how many yellow and blue drops from a dropper students use to make the same shade of green paint. Your job is going to be to complete the table and then to write an equation to represent the relationship between the amount of yellow paint and the amount of blue paint. So pause the video, try it out, come on back. Okay, there's lots of approaches for this problem, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a look at my first row. And I know I have three and a half milliliters of yellow and five and a quarter milliliters of blue. I can add those together to figure out the total number of milliliters of green I will have. So right here I'm going to take three and a half plus five and a quarter. I need to have a common denominator in order to add these. My common denominator will be four. So I'll multiply the denominator here by two, which means I have to multiply the numerator by two. So three and a half is the same as three and one times two is two, two times two is four. Three and a half is the same as three and two fourths, and you know that. You know if you have half of a circle, that's the same as having two fourths of the circle. And we're gonna add that to five and a fourth. Two fourths plus one fourth, that gives us three fourths. If I took my two fourths and I added one more fourth, I'd be up to three fourths. And three plus five is eight. So if you have eight and three fourths milliliters of green, that means you put in three and a half milliliters of yellow and five and a quarter milliliters of blue to create that. Now I need to figure out how to fill in my second row. Um, I'm going to choose to find a unit rate to help me out. <coughs> I know I could do my total to my blue, and then I could figure out what I'd have total if I had one milliliter of blue. So that's what I think I'll work out at this point. Again, several ways to go about this problem. Eight and three quarters total was five and one quarter blue. So now I say, how do I go from five and a quarter? What do I divide by to get down to one? Well, I divide by five and a quarter. Take a number, divide it by itself. You'll come up with one. I'm going to divide the denominator by five and a quarter. I'm going to divide the numerator by five and a quarter. So the problem I need to solve is eight and three-fourths divided by five and one quarter. Eight times four is 32, and three more is 35 over four divided by... 4 times 5 is 20, plus 1 is 21 over 4. Now I'm going to leave my 35 over 4, change my division to multiplication, and reverse this to 4 over 21. I can multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and simplify these 4s first, just to make the math a little bit easier. So then I have 35 times 1 is 35. 1 times 21 is 21. This isn't in simplest form. I can see that I can divide numerator and denominator by 7. 7 will go nicely into both. 35 divided by 7 is 5. 21 divided by 7 is 3. So if I had a total of 5 thirds milliliters, then I would just put in 1 milliliter of blue. 5 thirds is 1 and 2 thirds. So now that I have this beautiful unit rate for blue, that's actually a unit rate because it's per one. I'm going to use that unit rate to help me out because now I know if my total is five thirds, that means I put in one milliliter of blue. I could say in my second row, my total was five. How many milliliters of blue did I put in? So this is total to blue. And here I'd say, okay, five thirds times what gets me to five. And once I know five thirds times what would get me to five, I'll say one times that number and I'll have how much blue goes into that mixture. Some of you might be saying to yourselves, oh, I can see already five thirds times three is actually five. Some of you are like, I'm not comfortable with that. 
Well, if you're not sure of that, you could change this into a division problem. 5 thirds times what is 5 is the same as saying 5 divided by 5 thirds is what number? So this is the same as 5 over 1 times 3 over 5. I can simplify, 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 5 once, straight across the top, straight across the bottom, and I'll come up with 3 over 1, which is just 3. So that tells me I would be multiplying my numerator by 3, so I'd multiply my denominator by 3. 1 times 3 is 3. So I know here I'd have 3 milliliters of blue. Well, if my total's 5 and I have 3 milliliters of blue, I must have used 2 milliliters of yellow. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my unit rate again to figure out my total here. If I have uh, six, I'm sorry, if I have six and three quarters blue, and I want to know how many total milliliters I have of green, I can use my unit rate. My total of five thirds to one milliliter of blue. And then I'm saying to myself, what if instead I started with six and three quarters milliliters of blue, what would my total milliliters of green be? So right here I say one times what is six and three fourths? I say one times six and three fourths. If I'm going to multiply the denominator by six and three fourths, I'm going to multiply the numerator by six and three fourths. So that's the problem I have to solve. Five thirds times six and three fourths. That's the same as 5 thirds times 6 times 4 is 24 and 3 is 27 over 4. Multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. You can go ahead and use your calculator. 5 times 27 is 135. 3 times 4 is 12. 135 divided by 12. Again, use your calculator. That would be 11 and one quarter, I believe. Let me just double check that. 135 divided by 12 is 11.25 or 11 and one quarter. So I know I have 11 and one quarter milliliters of green if I put in six and three fourths milliliters of blue. How to figure out my yellow? Well, I would do yellow plus blue is total. Another way to look at that is to take my total and subtract off my blue, and I'll come up with my yellow. If I look here, can I take three from one? Well, I can't, so that means I need to borrow. I need to borrow one hole from the 11. Borrowing a hole from the 11 makes the 11 a 10. And if I'm borrowing one hole, how many fourths am I borrowing? I'm borrowing one, two, three, four fourths to make up one hole. So I'm borrowing four fourths. I had one fourth there already. I borrowed four more fourths. So then I have 10 and five fourths. 10 and five fourths minus six and three fourths. Five minus three is two. So that's two fourths. So 10 minus six is four. So four and two fourths or four and one half. So this is four and one half. So now I have my table filled in and that was step one. Now I want to come up with an equation that relates, that shows the relationship between yellow and blue. So I want to take a look here. They called yellow Y and they called B blue. So to write my equation, I just want to know what times yellow will get me to blue. It might be easiest to work here. Two times what gets me to three. If you're not sure two times what gets you to three, you can always do your blue divided by your yellow. You can do your three divided by two. Three divided by two is 1.5 or one and a half. So two times 1.5 is three. So your equation should be 1.5 or 1 and a half or 3 halves times y equals b. Now let's just double check that this actually works. Let's take 3 and a half times 1.5. So 3 and a half is 3.5 times 1.5. Let's check that on the calculator. So sorry about that. Let's check 3.5 times 1.5. 3.5 times 1.5 is 5.25. 5.25 5 
0.25 is a quarter, so five and a quarter. So that works out beautiful. Let's just double check that it works for this one also. Two and, or I'm sorry, four and one half times 1.5. Let's just double check. My screens keep moving on me, so sorry about that. So let's do 4.5 times 1.5. 4.5 times 1.5, you come up with 6.75, which is 6 and 3 quarters. So this equation totally works. What I need for you to write up for tomorrow's class is, how can the terms of a ratio be used to write an equivalent ratio? We've been working on that since day one of this unit, writing terms of a ratio as an equivalent ratio. Also, give, it, give a real-world example, other than paint mixing, where you might need to use equivalent ratios, and it's important to also know the total quantity. Thanks. Have a good night.